Welcome to the Nissan Aria. Here's the crazy EV thing EV. about Nissan's EV history. Did you know they sold a half million Leafs? They did? Where did those go? I had no idea they sold a half million Leafs. To who? Because I feel like for a while they were crazy, crazy cheap to lease. And you could get them for crazy cheap leases as many people Cheap didn't. to leave? But I feel like, yeah, they, they, they all left them. We're all leaving now. The point is, the tree is bare. they're not around anymore. The leaf yeah. bush Make is... like a tree and get out of here. <laughs> oh my gosh. But we're back. It's going to be this entire interview. The EV is back at Nissan. This is the yes, next it all is. EV. And taking what they learned in the Nissan Leaf, which actually had a significantly improved second generation, which you probably never have seen one of those on the road. No. This is the Aria, and it is their SUV. So it's checking all the boxes of everything everybody's talking about right now. Pretty much. It is five seat, yep. CUV shaped, mm -hmm. EV, and has uh, tendencies as if it is an autonomous car. It's all the boxes. Congratulations, box checked. But they had to do it yes. to be able to play in this market. Uh -huh. They they have to build something like this, and I've been continually asking the question: What in particular about this is Nissan flavored? Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. Road trips, comparisons, test drives, and podcasts. This is Everyday Driver. Well, it's got to be quick. It's got to have a lot of power. Well, it's an EV, and it does. But mm -hmm. it's also got that architecture, that battery under the floor. Yep. So that means it's got a 50-50 weight distribution, which is the holy grail for decades among yep. sports car enthusiasts yep. that want that perfectly neutral balance. Yeah, it's got it, but so do all these other EVs. And the marketing materials suggest as if Nissan engineers discovered they, that architecture <laughs> will give you a flat floor. There, yes. is, there is a lot of suggestion in yes. the marketing materials that suggests as if Nissan discovered a lot of what's Welcome. going on here. It's not particular yeah. to you. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. So, all right, and I take it, that. You know what? It drives well. And I've been thinking, would I take one of these or would I take a, a Model Y? Because I had this parked next to a Model Y and they were they're very similar in size. Incredibly sides. similar. If you're looking for any electric vehicle, you need Autotempest.com, so you can search all the car markets and even research dealers. Autotempest helps you search nationwide across all the used car sites, including Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. Plus, you can get email alerts so you never miss a listing. We use it to research for our podcast, to search for crazy road trip cars, and just because we like to dream. And Autotempest can even help with new cars, pricing out the options and getting local dealer quotes. So if you're shopping for the Aria or any EV, use autotempest.com slash everyday to get the help you need. Autotempest. All the cars, one search. We have the fully loaded Platinum Plus Edition. There are nine flavors yes. mm -hmm. of the Aria to choose from. Nine. S starts at $44,000. This one is 63 almost. Yeah. That is $20,000 worth of difference. That is adding 50% to nine. the base price to get through nine levels. This is, of <clears throat> course, the press car version, which means it is lots of badges. Platinum Plus and E-Force. E-Force. E-Force is not spelled like you think it does. Look at how it looks. <laughs> and what I think is ridiculous is they put the letter four in front of the Orse and then in the marketing materials, they put a the, pronunciation the, the number, key. The number four the, that acts like a letter. Yes, they put a pronunciation the, key. The number four, but, ORS. Uh, uh, <laughs> four, ORS. ORS. All right, well, we're jumping on the freeway here, and, you know, you got to be very judicious about your throttle response because I've decided that EV drivers in this category will do one of two things. They will either charge it at their house mm -hmm. and not care about using up all the juice and blast down the freeway and be quicker sure. than yeah, yeah. everyone else, or they will constantly watch the gauge. Like, uh oh, <laughs> I'm way down to eighty-one percent. Uh oh, eighty-one. I'm all the way down to eighty-one sure. percent. <sighs> Only one hundred and ninety-three miles remaining. Nissan says that the Aria will do three hundred and four miles of range. That's yes. not this particular one. You have to equip it properly. And it's only the front wheel drive flavor. It's not the fully loaded one. So at 5,000 pounds, just like every other SUV, five C, five C, egg shaped SUV, pretty much, it. Yes. Uh -huh. it drives very similarly to other things that we've experienced. Now, Nissan says from a handling standpoint, it's got that crisp turn in. I'm not feeling crisp. There's no crispy. I would not but describe okay. anything this does okay. as crisp. But I also think Fine. in this market segment, though, this drives like everything else. And none of those, with a couple of exceptions, what I describe as crisp handling. Crisp. The five-seat SUV world is not a world where I think the handling on this is great. Man, there's do only I a couple. Feel 
like crispy. The BMW X3 and the Macan. Yeah. I mean, yeah. these are the ones that have got like crisp handling. Maybe the Aria didn't make the list. I'm sorry, it no. didn't. But that's not why you buy this. True. It really isn't. It's because you want an EV and you need cargo space. And this does deliver. Except for one glaring thing. The climate control system is housed up front. Uh-huh. Under the hood. Uh-huh. Which means there is no frunk. Yeah, they were very excited to talk about how... Frunkless. The engineer... <laughs> Frunkless. Free of frunk. The frunk engineers free. were very excited about the fact they could take all the H back frunken and get it out of the cabin, which meant it went where the frunk should go. And yeah. I say that, look, I, I am fully aware of the fact that gas cars forever have not had a frunk. It's not been a thing. We've all been fine with the hatch and all that kind of thing. But the problem has been created, though, that an electric car has a hatch and a frunk. This so if is you what make they should an have. electric car without a frunk, it does look like a glaring omission. Yeah. Now, the Volkswagen ID4 did the same thing as this. There's all the HVAC stuff up there, and, and there's yet no they frunk. Sold. They and they sold. And they sold pretty well. So, I mean, clearly you can get around it, but it does feel like an omission when you're an electric car. So, we're on the freeway going, well, pretty fast, passing a few cars Things here. Things are being passed, yes. And it has this E step. See the button in the center console. Mm -hmm. E-step is really just that regenerative braking. So if you have it off, the car coasts well. But if you have it on, you let up and you can feel the car start to do that regen braking thing. Sure, yeah. Well, I noticed while charging this, I found the only, really the only true 50 kilowatt charger available in the Park City area. Yeah, our infrastructure is not good. Yeah, for it really isn't. Cars. So. Yeah. I cannot speak to your infrastructure. True. It this, will vary for you. But this max is at just over 100. I think 130 is the max it will take. So if you're a person that is looking for the fastest possible charging EVs out there, this isn't in the upper category. You're right. EVs are very much still set up for it would be best if you had a charger at home. That definitely makes it the simplest. However, <clears throat> what I find really funny is since now we're creating a world where we're going to sit for a while. Mm -hmm. We can't get to our destination, mm -hmm. but we can't go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. We're going to sit for a while. <laughs> Here it comes. They have here it comes. the extra little trough here. Woo! Hungry fella? This was described as not only an extra little storage area, but also you can close it and they can use it like a food tray while you're waiting. That was Sweet. actually in the marketing materials. This is my food tray. I hope that's also not a laptop tray. Well, don't work on your laptop while you're driving. Well, but this wouldn't, yeah, people are, the problem Please is, do this is theoretically designed for you to do while you're sitting and charging and you're bored. Right. When you put a tray here like this, it, it's going to get, how to put this tactfully, tempting is going to be the, the, the verbiage. But then, but this only opens with the fun little buttons here at the center console. This is not your glove box. Glove box is separate. That's, That's just using up electricity. Mm -hmm. You're using up electricity. We're well, going, no, to, well, we're still I, at 79. I, I okay. do it enough, it might go down a whole percentage. If we sit here enough going back and forth, I might use it up. Just yep. worried. All right, well, the center console, since we're on electronic gadgets, mm -hmm. the center console has buttons right here next to the driver to slide it fore and aft. So if the food trough didn't hold enough, you could use this to feed the brood in the yes, back. Yes, feed the brood. <laughs> all right, so you can adjust this mm -hmm. to where you want, obviously, the shifter and your drinks to appear. Well, and also just you can make it's it fun. whatever your ergonomics are for your preferred center console and your mm -hmm. center armrest. Yeah. You can vary it up a lot, which is nice. The design intent is really what is truly Nissan. And I'm happy mm. that Nissan has gone away from the theme. It's the not big pretty. V. The big V, that flying V. It's They've not gotten rid of the chrome barred V. And this, they're just suggesting with the shield that goes into the accent lights. Yes. That are the fins of the V. Yes. This is a timeless Japanese futurism theme, mm. which means minimalism. But to me, it's warmer than a Tesla. And even though they're very happy about themselves that they have a, a dearth of buttons, a lack of buttons, mm -hmm. there's still more than inside a Model Y. And I do like that they're using it when they need to be used. Also, they're very much all about haptics. And here, I actually do like it. I didn't like it at first when I got in. Okay. Actually kind of annoyed me, but it actually cleans up the instrument panel and they're using a combination of materials, but also it, it's clean, but notice these screens. It doesn't have to be a giant iPad. It can still kind of look like yes. a car, mm -hmm. like we know cars to be, but it does have a, a warm, inviting, but still futuristic look to it. And then same thing on the center console. 
this Nissan shifter, which is the same on their gas powered vehicles. So that's a familiar sight, mm -hmm. which is nice. And then controls underneath the wood. So the, the haptics underneath the wood, they do not operate like buttons, despite what Nissan tells you. They do not have the same feel. <laughs> they don't. They seem like something printed on the wood and they work though. They but do they work. do work mm -hmm. and they illuminate and, and it cleans things up. I, sure. I do appreciate that. But look, they've got a recirc button for the HVAC system and mm -hmm. a volume knob front center, the big one. That, thank you, Nissan. For yes, that. for sure. They, they did make good choices on the things that are not screen buried. I am obviously a button guy, but I understand the reasons for this haptic use. But here's here's the one bonus I will give you, Nissan, and that is you did haptics that aren't buried in piano black. Yes. And that may agreed. be the first time I've seen that. And it, it is amazing how much more inviting it is to not have piano black that is also a haptic button. There's a lot of features on this car. And the theme for the interior is a lounge. Well, yeah, it yeah. feels that mm -hmm. way because you got a flat floor, but so do all the EVs. In the actual press kit, it actually said these words. You and your passengers are going to sit here and it's not going to feel like a car. It's going to feel like the lounge of a starship. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just saying what they said. I'm just repeating what I was told. It feels like a car. It's a car. It feels a like a car yeah, to me. It's electric. Now, I, do, I, I, do, I want it to feel like I a car. I do applaud them for making one. They did talk about this. All of the screens are at the same height. Mm-hmm. So yes. it is, it's on the same line, and they actually did a really good job in this, this kind of complex curve in the middle of the screen, and yet it still feels very usable. They didn't break it into two screens. That actually is one of the best screen executions I've seen. Agreed, but it's not overdone in here. It's not designs and shapes for the sake of something different. It mm. actually really works. Same thing on the exterior. Timeless design, but this does stand out despite its size. But you'll notice that they're using tricks. The designers are using tricks on this. Even though there are full body colors available, <laughs> most of them have a black roof and black rockers. Yes. You'll notice it's to give that side proportion a lower visual height. Yes, for Those sure. black rockers are really tall. Same with that huge black bumper out mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit big, but it does reduce the visual height. And then that same Mach-E trick with the line that starts at the base of the A-pillar goes over the passenger's yep. head and ends. You'll notice the roof is blacked out because it's actually larger. You're hiding it, just to, like to the To give the passenger yep, space back there, sure. the, yep. the headroom. All those tricks actually do work, and Nissan is successful with this design. Mm -hmm. I like it much better than Tesla designs. They're using a traditional Japanese pattern just underneath the front plastic on the grill so it suggests a grill, but there's a pattern there and it's very mm -hmm. subtle. And you walk around the car, the way these lines, you'll see this nice shoulder line starts at the very front and then wraps around the car. It's very strong. Mm. Despite their the fussiness of how those surfaces meet and end, they're successful. A lot of them converge at the C and the D pillar back there, but it's still successful and it's still harmonious. And I appreciate the work that's gone into this design. What are we buying in EVs, if not style? If they drive the same, You're they right. have similar range, right. they're yep. about the same power. What are we buying? Style and how it makes you feel. That's what the interior does. That's what the exterior does. And for that reason, I think this is a success. Okay, I'm going to go with that. You know the styling better than I do. I think they have made their own feel out of the exterior, and yeah. that is very impressive. Yeah. I need I need to drive, and I have much to say. You're going to use up the... I might use up another percentage or two. I think we'll make it home. I feel confident. We're, we only have 78% left. We have 190 miles. It's not going to take that long. Man, it's just going to suck the power. <laughs> We're going to be fine. Oh, it's going to do. Thank you for your concern. <laughs> I sat in the back real quick mm -hmm. because after reading all of the materials we were sent about this car and like digging in, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they kept returning to one point. Mm -hmm. The back seat has so much room you can cross your legs. I have a suggestion. In your lounge? Make it comfortable. There's space, but the seat is an uncomfortable back seat. In spite yeah. of having a lot of usable space, the seat feels cheaper than this car is. And that's a problem. Fair now, commentary. Lot, lots, lots of good space here. They've done EV well. This doesn't feel like a company doing its first ever EV. I will applaud them. It doesn't. It's obvious because Nissan knows what they're doing. What this are you talking has, about? Build quality? Weird. This has is that a shot? This has it's close to 400 horsepower. Okay, this is the two motor, all wheel drive version. You have the region on quite a bit right now, but that's all good because you can do some one pedal driving with this. I don't think you can go all the way to a stop. Can you? Mm, uh, almost. On. We'll almost. try. We'll try. Wait, maybe. Oh, 
Okay, full one pedal driving. Hang on. I think See, I it's just a little rolling. bit of a transmission creep. Although just I think you can turn that off. Creep. Dig in to get the one pedal to work out if you want. But what'd you say? Starliner? We're in is the, there any the fabric lounge mode? of a starship? Is there any fabric mode in here? You know it. We're in the lounge of a starship. Woohoo! Oh, so 382 horsepower, in, in 442 the, pound feet of torque. In the world of EVs, this has acceptable power. This is not one of the most powerful out there. But what I want to talk about in this is drive modes. Every EV on the planet has drive modes. Drive modes is the thing that all cars are doing now, and this makes some interesting choices that I don't think I like. <laughs> We're in normal mode right now, and you know what? We in are. normal mode, I, I will actually give this some real credit. It rides well in normal mode. It's quiet. It does all the EV things. The, the handling is fine. The ride is good. I don't have any issues. Then you go to sport mode. <clears throat> oh, there it is. Oh. That is this car. What is that noise? It is a grumbling whoosh. It's the distant sound of chainsaws. Something like, that's like a grumble with a whistle combined. You know, I notice this too when I put it in sport because usually, I mean, that's the default setting. You would think? You get in a car and yes. sport. I heard this noise and I thought, is that? I thought there was a problem. On? I thought it was another car. Is something they dragging? Have, here you go. Yeah, that's the problem. They have Getting, fabricated a noise to go with your increases. accelerator as if it's like their digital futuristic engine noise. It's a bad noise. That's the problem. It's a bad noise. And the other thing that happens that I only discovered in sport mode, because I kept thinking how great this thing rode. And then I happened to have it in sport mode, and I was pondering the engine noise, because it is a noise. Pondering. And then I began to porpoise down the road. You noticed that too? A porpoising. Got, in you know, sport it, it or standard? I noticed it in sport. Because I noticed it in standard. Okay, well, it was softer in standard, and so I put it back in sport. It depends on the road, and that it's the undulations key. in the road that match the wheelbase. If you That's find all the it is. exact wrong combination of yeah. road and suspension, there is porpoising. Yes. And that is something that I have rarely ever encountered in cars. And Agreed. Unfortunately, now, you may drive this your entire life, and it may never happen to you once. Depends on the road. I wind up feeling like this is a really mixed bag in a competitive market. Mm -hmm. I think that the Model Y is a little bit better than this dynamically, speed and also infrastructure. Agree. I prefer the interior in this than I do to the Model Y. I actually prefer the totally. look of this over the Model Y. Agreed, yes. But from a driving perspective, I'd rather be driving the Model Y. But then I think of, hang on a second, the Mustang Mach-E exists. And I think I would take that over this across the board. Because forty-four grand for the base, this feels like a lot of car for forty-four grand. I don't feel like it feels like enough car at sixty plus grand. The problem with the forty-four thousand dollar version is you're only getting a sixty-seven kilowatt per hour battery. Yep. You're not getting the eighty-seven that's in this, yep. and you're only getting front-wheel drive. Yes. So if you want True. to upgrade and you want all the features that this has, mm -hmm. and the nicer extra interior pieces, welcome and the stuff to that makes it feel like I agree. EVs cost about sixty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That's what this is. And but I do think Nissan they have a solid very good entry into this market I agree. if you are no, shopping. I agree. Yes. If, if it's you... not necessarily like the range standout or the acceleration standout. Do they need to be the fastest thing ever? Not really. You're just this will using be faster up your battery. Whatever gas car the person owned prior. Yes. If the Nissan Aria interests you, I think you will be satisfied. I agree to that. If yeah. you were looking for what's the best five seat SUV that's an also an EV, it's not this one. The EV6. I think is better than this. The Mustang Mach-E is better than this. The Ionic 5 is better than this. Those are the standouts of the segment. And the GV60. The GV60. I keep thinking uh, about how much I the, like that. Mm -hmm, it, and it was only about uh, five to 10 grand more than this loaded out and it felt like a luxury item at 65, yes, 70 grand. Did. This at low 60s does not feel like a luxury item. It feels very good, but I would not describe it as luxury. This interests you and you can get a deal that you like on it. I think you will be very satisfied. I don't think it's a segment leader. If they're all pretty much the same range mm -hmm. and they all have about the same horsepower and similar feeling acceleration, unless it's a handling standout, you're buying style. You are. You're right. You're right. 